Well, we can't waste any time. She was talking about suicide. Oh, lots of people do. Mostly it's just talk. Welcome back to my dark corner of this sick world. Oh, there's no understanding these village people. Yeah, especially the construction worker. Oh, the old boy means well. Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde is perhaps my favourite horror story. Deftly blending visceral and psychological horror as Dr. Jekyll takes his potion to become... Mr. Hyde, a human werewolf. Perhaps I don't know this story as well as I thought. And that's not a werewolf. Are you sure? Yes, I'm sure. The villagers broke into this tomb and drove a stake through his heart. Well, hang on, is he a vampire or a werewolf? Because werewolf is silver bullet. We know how to deal with werewolves. Well, clearly you don't. You're just trying to stir up trouble with your wicked nonsense. OK, let's back up. This is Edgar G. Ulmer's Daughter of Dr. Jekyll, and based on the title, I am reasonably confident that it has something to do with Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. Are you serious? Although not as confident as I was. I've had enough mysteries. Now I want some answers. The film follows Janet, who discovers that she is the daughter of Dr. Jekyll. Not the Dr. Jekyll. Yes, the well-known werewolf. And I'm still not happy about that, but the film does at least retain the idea that Jekyll takes a potion to transform. This looks as if it could have been used for some kind of chemical laboratory at one time. Really? What tipped you off? I was the dull plodder. Janet doesn't take this news well, especially as others seem determined to rub it in. But do you want to change? You can't say that to a Jekyll! Had you had a good night's sleep, you'd feel like another girl. Perhaps because of this, she becomes convinced that she has inherited her father's lycanthropy. Why should it be hereditary? Good question. Since Jekyll took a potion to transform, it does seem a little like never getting a headache because your father took aspirin. This is ridiculous. Still, a series of vivid dreams and bloody murders convince Janet that she too is a werewolf. Why, you little idiot. And she and her boyfriend research the subject using what appears to be a book on tape. Sometimes of a dead body, sometimes of a human monster. Either that or she can hear his thoughts. To put a stop to its ravages, a stake is driven through the corpse. And vice versa. Nonsense. But actually, it's her guardian, Dr. Loomis, who turns out to be the werewolf. Do wolves usually kick their prey to death? That's good enough for me. Loomis uses Janet as a scapegoat for his killings, just as he did her father. He used Dr. Jekyll in his earlier killings to gain control of the estate. Does beg the question of what he did for the 20 years in between Jekyll's death and Janet's arrival. Well, frankly, I feel like an idiot. The film takes place in a corner of England that is forever California. At least of the Tudor period. Tudor. I'm not a local woman, I come from near Liverpool. When the film takes place is even more speculative, as can be seen in a comparison of ladies' underwear. But the main issue remains. This has nothing to do with Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. Are you sure? This is a werewolf movie. Is it indeed? So, why bother with all the Jekyll and Hyde stuff? I give up. I don't actually have an answer. If you do, comments below. Tell us about it. If you've got a film you'd like us to review, leave a comment below. Click here to subscribe, here to see more reviews, or if you'd like to take your chance in the dark corners mystery box of death, click down there. <laughs>